service for David William Reed and on behalf of my family and the church here at Carpenters Memorial in Golden Spring, I want to extend our condolences to Mrs. Reed and the family. We know that death, um, no matter how sick we were before, no matter what may have happened and transpired before death, when it comes brings not only bereavement, but grief, sorrow, pain, and some people like a loss. So I understand because my mom died yesterday, so I understand what the Reed's family and others are experiencing at this time. All right, so we're going to begin. Um, today I have with me two other pastors that are part of the program. As you know, my name is Reverend Winston Smith. I'm the host pastor. And uh, I have with me Pastor Kimo Campbell and uh, just um, Brother Jeremy Campbell will join us um, maybe a half a minute time. Okay? But I'm going to start. Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. He comes forth like the grass, or like the flowers, and withers. He dies like the shadow, or um, he's like the shadow, and he continues not. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and his place know it no more. But he that is steadfast love of our Lord Jesus Christ is everlasting and is upon those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. 
So welcome one and all again, and we will continue this service. And I will just begin until uh, Brother Jermaine Campbell gets inside. We're going to have some courses, and of course, Sister Tyler Reed and Matthew, uh, they are going to come, and they are going to lead us into some courses. So even though it's a time of bereavement and time of grief, please let's put a little you know, joy and excitement in the midst of it all. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the house of the Lord. I will invite you all to join me in a few choruses at this time of praise and worship. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless it, oh
service as we celebrate the life of David William Reed. Indeed, he has been a blessing to us, and so we come to um, celebrate and give God thanks for the life he had lived. Amen? Praise the Lord. Um, we give God thanks that we are well and that we are alive and that we can celebrate with the family today. And so as we continue um, this morning proceedings, we want to sing melodiously. We want to read um, audibly and we want to ensure that we stand together in unity as we um, celebrate um, Mr. Reed, the late um, David Reed's life. Amen? Um, the hymn says, Oh great thou art, Oh great thou art, O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds that thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, the powers throughout the universe delayed. Amen? And so we will ask um, Miss, uh, Mrs. Reed to come and lead us in this opening hymn. Thereafter, we will have the prayer by um, Pastor Kimo Campbell. So let us stand, um, and we will be sitting for a while. So let us stand as we sing the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. the Lord. Oh Lord, my God, when I awesome wonder, consider all I see the stars, I hear the moment of the world, when the universe is then sings my song, my Savior's Yes. 
So your hands are working, your eyes are intact, you can hear, you can feel. So your five senses are intact, amen? And so we're about to celebrate vibrantly the life of David reading today. And so it is fitting at this juncture to read from Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through to verse 9. And um, Brother Kirk Reed will come and lead us in this first lesson from Philippians chapter 4, reading from verse 4 through to verse 9. Morning, everyone. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto you. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned, and received, and heard, and seen in me, do, and the blood of me shall be with you. Amen. Can you encourage Brother Kirk, please? <laughs> and if we keep it like that, then um, the other person at home, because it's difficult especially for the family member. So we want to encourage them with a hearty round of applause. Amen? Yes. All right. So now we'll have a 10 year read, Peter Reed, a Matthew Reed. We'll be coming with a selection. Oh, 
So we'll do them as, as um, they come. First come, first serve. And so my sister is coming to be first in line. Amen.
Please could you stand in reverence and awe for the reading of God's holy word. Good morning. But now God saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be thee and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest with the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall faint in thee upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Saviour. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honourable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thee. Thank you. Hymn of meditation. You may be seated. Hymn of meditation. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. This is real. We will call my help us along with uh, Matthew.
God, it is well with my soul. Amen. Praise the Lord. And now we will have Elisa and Davis um, to uh, come with the remembrance. Sister Lisa and Davis uh, will come with the remembrance. After which, we will give you another opportunity um, for those open tributes. If you have mustered up the courage to come forward. Just imagine the God of dance a tiny grain of sand into an oyster to create a beautiful natural pearl and places in a vast ocean to be found like a precious treasure. This is the same God that decided to create you and place you in this world like a precious trinity. David William Reed was that pearl born into this world. The night he did it, night he sent it to me. He was the last of five siblings Lisa, Peter, Bert, and Sudan. David lived a simple life. His first choice and natural talent was mechanics. He came in contact with people of all walks of life. Over time, he would attract nicknames such as Polo, Cuckoo, Russian, Brown Man, and to his family, he was a man of few words, but we know he touched many lives in a positive way. Even though David was loved, even though David loved his family very much, he was more of a free spirit, one who affected the lives of the people too much to come. He very much loved his nephews, Justin, Matthew, DJ, and William Morton, who in return loved their uncle Didi with all their hearts. Didi was selfless. Easy going, patient, and unpretentious. He also had a spontaneous sense of humor. Mom recalls countless, countless nights when he would bring home being on cake, police bottle, and other goodies, as well as, as making sure she drank her coconut water before bedtime. He also loved to snack on bacon and pancakes. There were many wonderful aspects to David's life. He would be remembered as a brother, son, uncle, cousin, and a friend to all. We are all the better for it. So we encourage you to share today, tomorrow, and the years to come, your memories and stories. As the memories flow, we can remember he had a quirk of holding up one side of his pants, and it followed him through life, from the beginning to the very end. After that is passing in 2020, we knew he pined silently as they shared an inseparable bond. He left us suddenly but peacefully. He called upon the name of Jesus in his dying moments. His two brothers. Mom, Bert, and Peter were towers of strength. And Peter was with him from the beginning until the end of his journey. Peter prayed with him as well as Dr. Simi. I love you, who fought hard to save him. Mom's brother, Mark, Gigi's cousins, Monique, Jason and Ashley, and sister and now Janine never let them outside. We will be eternally grateful for their support. We are sending kisses to the sky. Now we have an angel of prayer. We know that it's also the best thing ever. Thank you. Until that glorious resurrection day, sleep by me until we meet again. We will carry you in our hearts for it. Thank you uh, for this day's news. Right. I, I noticed that there is a selection, and uh, the person who is to do the selection, we we'll invite you to do it now, and then we will go to the open tributes. Another opportunity for um, for you to give your tribute. Selection.
will bend the truth. The Lord's my shepherd. I I not want. He makes me down to life. In pastors green, he leadeth me. The quiet water is I'll invite the ushers to come forward as we do the offertory hymn, and then we will be praying, and then we will be collecting the hymn, and Sister Reed will come and help us with the Lord's My Shepherd. Happy Wonder. We will be praying for the collection, and then we will be doing the offertory. Good morning, everyone. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning to give you thanks. You said in everything you have to give you thanks. And this time of loss and fear, we ask you, Lord, to dwell among the families. And we thank you, Lord, for what you are doing for them, right now for them, to comfort them, and to let them know that they are in the power of your hands. Yes. As we go home to call it this afternoon, Lord, we ask you to bless it to the furtherance of your word as we give you thanks for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The Lord's my shepherd, I know the one. He makes me down to life. In pastors' grief, he leads me. The quiet waters of
Praise the Lord. Indeed, God lives. And He lives within our hearts. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. At this juncture, we will be uh, hearing from the servant of God. We will be uh, sharing a word to us. A word that will bring comfort to the family and comfort to us. A soul that will invoke the presence of the Holy Spirit. A word that will touch our hearts. And we pray that the Lord will indeed uh, bear fruit. So let us pray for the servant of God who will be sharing the word. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your servant. Lord, we praise you that you have given him a word, a real word for your people at this moment. We praise you, mighty God, that indeed you will grant him strength. Lord, we praise you that he will speak with, with eloquence and fine speech. We praise you in the name of Jesus that most importantly, the word will fall on good soil. We praise you, Lord God, that uh, the hearts of the family will be blessed. Lord, and most importantly, souls will be saved, life will be converted, and people will be convinced that Jesus is mine. So set the atmosphere right as your servant comes to share your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Jeremy Campbell. All right, there's a verse in the Bible that is so um, well known and uh, people, you know, they have memorized this particular verse. And we just saw um, one of the verses, of course, that verse in particular. And it is in Psalm 23 and verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy star, they comfort me. Uh, for the short time we have, I as, as, um, assure you by 12.30 we should be out of here, all right? I want to talk on the topic, the presence of God in time of sorrow. The presence of God in time of sorrow. Now all of us have had some time of sorrows. We know what it is to shed tears, to have a broken heart, to have a void within our hearts as a loved one has been called home. Someone once said, and I quote, sorrow is one traveler which every one of us must meet on the road of life. Sorrow is one traveler which every one of us must meet on the road of life. Indeed, in my own experience, I have had my father die 20 years ago, my brother 16 years ago, and my mom just one day ago. Now, as a noun, sorrow is a feeling of deep distress caused by loss, disappointment, or other misfortune suffered by oneself or another. As a verb, sorrow is to feel or display deep distress. Nothing is wrong in expressing our own feelings. It is important that we get out of our inner being all the pent-up feelings because that itself becomes a remedy. I want to share with us and discuss with you sorrow from three aspects as quickly as possible. First, the prevalence of sorrow. The prevalence of sorrow. Someone has said, God had one son without sin, but no son without sorrow. One son without sin, but no son without sorrow. Let's look at a few examples. Jesus himself, he had his full share of sorrows. I quote a couple of verses to help us to understand. In Isaiah 53 and verse 3 in the second part, it says, a man of sorrows and acquainted with our griefs. And in Luke's gospel, chapter 19, verse 40, as Jesus looked on the people, and after he 
extended an invitation for them to repent and to turn to him. They refused, they rejected him, and he looked on them as lost sheep. And he said, the word of God says that he lamented. He lamented. We think of Jesus at uh, the news that Lazarus had passed on. And in John Gospel chapter 11, 35, you and I know that verse from a child, from a child right? You know, can you say it to me? Jesus what? Jesus wept. You don't know that verse? I'm sure you do. Jesus wept. So he tells us that Jesus was able to identify with anyone who grieved, anyone who was lost a loved one. But when we think of not only of Jesus, as he, more than anybody else, has been through sorrows, we think of other Bible characters, and I mean two people. Jeremiah was called um, the prophet, you know, of Saul, the weeping prophet. Why? Because he wept over the negligence of the people to whom he was sharing the gospel. He wept because people were unrepentant. They were stubborn, stiff-necked, and they were homemade to people. He cried over them many times, and at one time he got so disappointed, discouraged, that he wanted to cease praise, praising God and preaching the gospel. But the word of God tells us that he felt like a fire shut up in his bones and he could not be silenced. We think also of Job, one of the most well-known uh, Bible character who has been through, you know, humongous trials and troubles, but came out triumphantly. Indeed, you just imagine just losing one person in your family, and we can feel the grief and the sorrow, right? But think about ten children. Think about that. Within a jiffy, within a short space of time, to lose ten children, wow, that is something that no human being can withstand. Yet, Job could say, the Lord gave, and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Not every one of us could do that. Eh? But we are all different people, don't it? Amen. But you see, Job recognized that whatever happens in his life is not an accident. It's not coincidental. God is having his own way. God does what is right in our lives, even when we don't think so. But I